Apocalypse. Is a fool an insult? No. The Bible says a fool says to himself in his heart, no to God. It means, according to the Bible, if a man has rejected God, he's a fool. Now you go and get married to Muhammad. Get married to Abdullah. You're speaking to a man or getting, getting position for a man that has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet the Bible says, do not be equally unyoked with do not be unequally yoked with non-believers. For what fellowship does the light have with darkness? And what, what connection does, 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 does... Do you get what I'm saying? Hallelujah. I know I'm stepping on some toes already before I begin. This is what it is. Biblically speaking, a woman can only be found from the place or by the person she positioned herself for. Did you get what I just said? Praise the Lord. That positioning determines who finds you. There are women who are found by fools. There are women who are found by immature men. And there are women who are found by kings. Did you get what I just said? Now, it's possible for a fool to find a queen. If the queen was wrongly positioned. You get what I'm saying? And it's also possible for a king to find a fool. If the king sought wrong. Okay. The Bible says that it is better for you to live in a corner of an attic. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That it's better for you to live at the rooftop of a house than live with a quarrelsome woman. But it's better for you to live in a corner of an attic. You'd better live on the roof of a house, no blankets, than live with a woman who loves quarreling. Proverbs 25, 24. Proverbs 21, 9. <gasps> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That you would rather stay single than marry a quarrelsome what? Sister, say amen. That it's better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman. Get me another, another, another version that explains brawling. Brawling is too hard English. That it's better to live on a corner of a roof than to do what? It's better to live, to be living in an angle of a housetop than to be to, than with a bitter-tongued woman. In a white house. That you can have a duplex. But if you have a quarrelsome woman. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you will desire to go and live in the tank. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God. Now the Bible says. You would, you, you would rather be single. Share a house with a nagging wife. <laughs> That's what the scripture calls it. <laughs> praise the Lord. The HCSB says. Instead of sharing a house with a nagging wife. You'd rather live on the roof like a bird. And let it rain on you. But if you share a house with a woman that quarrels over the fridge, the glass, the TV, the remote, you'd rather live without a wife. But why would a, woman, a man uh, be in a house with a nagging woman? Because she, he did not understand how to seek. The law of seeking biblically Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The law of seeking is a law of kings. Did you get what I'm saying? You are not supposed to be seeking or searching, biblically speaking, if you have not got out the king in you. Because if you seek when you are a, a fool, if by chance you fall on a very good woman, if David shows up one day, you will take her. The Bible says that Nabal married Abigail. And when Nabal married Abigail, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, the day David came, Abigail left Nabal and he went to David. And David married Nabal. If you get me, say an amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in this kingdom, it's the role of a man to seek, to search. It's not the role of a woman. And in this kingdom, it's the role of a woman to position herself. 
But now, what do they call positioning? Because some of you right now are going to buy shorter skirts. And you call it positioning. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I've heard some people teaching these things funny. And they say, sister, your face is funny. Get some lipstick. Position. No. It's not the truth. Positioning here is a spiritual aspect. Somebody say hallelujah. And when we talk about positioning here, we're talking about spiritual branding. And what we call spiritual branding is that you put yourself in a place in the spirit where some people can't find you. First of all, a woman that is positioning herself for marriage, she does not position herself firstly for the king. No. She positions herself firstly in a place that another person who is not the king can't find her. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. Now let me explain to you. There are some of you that should get on a fasting of 30 days when some guy finds you. You should be asking yourself, why can I be found by such a man? Are you hearing what I'm saying? The sisters here, your tongue speaking and beautiful and smart, but somehow, every time somebody comes to you, they have a problem. You're never found by kings, you're found by fools. And some things when they happen to you, you should be able to go and ask God, what is wrong with me? Am I positioned wrong? Because finding is about positioning. How can you be walking from church and the border border guy is the one? How? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How can you be? How can it be that all your life it's border border guys that talk about you? And you, <laughs> you also say, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You might end up with a border border guy. I'm not saying it's wrong to drive border border. I'm talking about. Who, who have you positioned yourself to be? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because firstly, how can a man who should marry a queen start by it? How can a man who is going to marry a king, a queen, begin her conversation with it? And then the Gusista also, <laughs> what, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? How, how, can, how can that conversation begin with a and you also smile? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a problem with your positioning. It's the same to the gentleman. How can you always, always found, find the wrong person? You get what I'm saying? They, because they have not learned how to search. Somebody is getting married to a person who is supposed to be her client. You get? Some people get married to people who are supposed to be their bosses. So people are going to marry some to, to people who are going, supposed to be their daughters. You get it? Because their understanding of searching is a wrong understanding. And so somehow they find themselves in a wrong place. Because they did not read what it means to seek. Why? Because when we talk about marriage, they think, ah, this is not a spiritual thing. It is a spiritual thing. Marriage was invented of the Lord. It, marriage was firstly had in Genesis. When he said, it is not good for a man to be alone. It is God who spoke it first. And so when you think God should be out, now I do marriage my kind of way, you're going to crumble. And when you crumble, <laughs> you would rather crumble in any other thing than crumble in marriage. Somebody say hallelujah. You'd rather knock in any other place. You'd rather mess up in business than mess up in here. Because this thing is not about you only. It's about for you. And your children and your children's children. This thing is effectual. So when we're talking about marriage, it's like some of you, when we talk about marriage, you begin feeling shy. What's wrong with you? Say, pray about marriage. <laughs> and when we talk about money, blah, 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 blah. marriage, uh, uh. and then it knocks at you full. Because for you, you want to pray over marriage when you're already in there. When a woman gets married, they're supposed to be praying for other people's marriages. You're supposed to become a counselor after honeymoon. But for you, you begin to pray after honeymoon. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Somebody sent me a text today when I was in, in the hotel and told me, have you seen this news? I'm like, what's the news? Like, uh, this is my friend. He told me her name. He said, gentleman came from abroad and they made a, a, they made a party of one billion. Have you seen such thing? Somewhere on the news. Now this guy's called Alan and he sent me a text and he told me, this is my friend. I need you to pray for her. What happened? 
they did a wedding of one billion and they went for honeymoon and the guy drowned in the river and died. What is that? What is that? Praise the Lord. Uh -uh, praise the Lord. Some things are not supposed... Now there's somebody saying, but those are natural disasters. How can we avoid them? Uh, don't marry such a guy who's saying that. Don't marry such a guy. That's a fool. But those are natural disasters. Aren't you above natural disasters? Does in the Bible say that the path of the just shines brighter and brighter into a perfect day? Are you one of the guys that should find themselves drowning in water when it's time for joy? Have you not understood and mastered the law of seasons and times? How can you find, how can you be the one to die on your wedding? How? How can you be the one to die on your wedding? Die on your funeral. There are other functions you can die on. You can't die on your wedding. At least die on your funeral. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Like just, just, just get mad and be like, here are some contribution. Dennis Judah gave a contribution of one billion. Just get out of the, of the coffin like, what? Who is going to eat that? Ah, let me die. You just die on your funeral. Don't, <laughs> don't die on your wedding. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I want to teach you the law of what? Of searching. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, all of you know the story about the Magi. The Magi. The three wise men. In Matthew chapter 2. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is one thing that all of you should learn. That kings do not search men. Kings follow stars. Did you get what I'm saying? The three wise men. Wise men follow after stars. That's how you know the person that is looking for you or the person that has found you if they are wise or they are fools. They seek, they follow stars. They follow stars. They don't follow people. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is how to understand. Even if a king is here, you know what to follow when you're seeking, when you're searching. We don't seek beauty. We don't search after hips and smiles. I'm not saying, praise the Lord. I'm not saying don't marry beautiful people. I'm just saying beauty is not precedental. It's not elementary enough. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30, 31, 30. He says beauty is deceptive, right? Beauty is deceptive. Beauty is deceptive. It means that's not a thing to consider foundationally. If you have a beautiful sister next to you, tell them, praise the Lord. Hi. Tell them beauty is deceptive. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Beauty is what? Proverbs 31, 30. He says beauty is what? It's deceptive. I don't know why we're not there yet. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. What's wrong with KJV? That's favor, not beauty. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. No, the, the word favor should be beauty also. And beauty is what? It's vain. Beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Charm is deceitful and beauty is what? It's vain. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be honored. The one who fears the Lord Adonai will be praised. Somebody say hallelujah. And right now, this is a wise man. This gentleman had 1,000 women. Praise the Lord. His name is Solomon. So he had an experience in searching and finding. And so he says, the first thing to consider is not beauty. The ones who find beauty as first thing are not kings. Now let me explain to you some things. Some of you have understood your placing in God and have understood yourselves as royalty. You know your sons of God and you know that you are royalty and called for purpose and the reason why you're living here is to fulfill certain things. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize that royalty doesn't marry out of love. Is that the truth? Royalty does not marry out of love. Princes don't marry after love. It's no more men that marry after love. Princes, actually, it is the kings that choose wives of the crown prince. 
Why? Because princes marry for the throne. Did you get what I just said? In this kingdom, if you're a prince, you don't marry because you f- fell in love. No, because according to the Bible, we do not marry who we love. We m- love who we marry. You get what I'm saying? In, the, in scripture, you can do it the way you want it because some of you will choose the kingdom of the other side than this kingdom. Some of you will choose the world over scripture. But here, in this kingdom, we don't love and then marry. No, here, we marry and then love. Scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5 that husbands love your wives. You love them when they are already wives. Love your wives as Christ has loved the church. And the Bible says, and wives in the same manner, submit yourselves to all your own husbands. We submit to men who are already husbands. So here we do not love and then marry. Here we marry and then love. It means for marriage we do not look at if I love him or if I love her or I don't love her. No, 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 no. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know I'm breaking relationships right now. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're going to meet a man and you'll be like, all right, now, why do you want to marry her? I love her. And it sounds very wise, but it's, it's stupid. I love her. You get what I'm saying? No, love here is not a feeling. It's not, a, it's not <laughs> love in this kingdom is not a feeling. Love here is a choice. Did you get what I just said? You make a deliberate choice every day to love. Otherwise, if we're going to love as Christ loved the church, Christ does not love us because he feels it. Christ wakes up one day and we have messed up and he feels he wants to cast us out, but he chooses to do what? To love us. That's why the Bible says Christ... Oh, look here. Like every time I look at you, your eyes are on the, on the door. You're asking, who is coming? I'm the boss. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now let me explain a few things here. According to the world, you love and marry. According to scripture, you marry and love. According to the world, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The reason for love, for marrying is love. According to to scripture, the reason for marrying is purpose. According to the world, you marry her because your heart beats for her. Dear, when you see her, you feel butterflies in your belly. When you get what I'm saying, when you see her, the heart jumps a beat. It plays hip hop. In this scripture, that's not what happens. The Bible says, "Husbands, love your wives." He doesn't say, "Love your women and make them wives." No. He says, love, you're, you're loving a person you've already married. Here. So, when you marry them, why does God wait for you to love, to marry, and then after marrying, when you're in honeymoon, tell him, love this one. God comes and tells you, uh-huh, you've married her, now love her. Why doesn't God tell you when you're in courtship? Because according to scripture, we do not first love. No. We first marry. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The thing to identify before marriage here is purpose. If you really are royalty and you are a son of God as you call it. If you really are born of God and his blood is flowing through your DNA. You must marry on his way. On, according to him. The devil did not know about marriage before God did. God invented marriage. And if a man is going to be successful in marriage, you must learn the laws of marriage according to God. If you got me say an amen here. You get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? And so this is how you understand that princes, kings, don't choose wives that they love. No, no, no. Princes choose wives that are royalty. Royalty doesn't marry commonness. Royalty marries royalty. Princes marry for the throne, for the kingdom. They marry for the throne, for the kingdom, for purpose. Not for what they feel. Because a feeling wakes up one day and it's gone. Purpose doesn't go. Because purpose is as long as your life. Purpose gone, goes when you go. Feeling goes when you have malaria. Feeling goes when they stop you from watching Premier League. Feeling flies 
when there's no money to pay rent. Feeling disappears when you can't raise the 100k. Did you get what I just said? But purpose holds people together even when, uh, that's why the Bible says until death does part. It says let no man separate what God has put together. Why? Because purpose is bigger than feeling. And every person that begins a marriage with feeling, they fail. You get what I'm saying? Because this is, this is something that people don't understand. Every man has been made with a tendency, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, of something called, it's called the law of fondity. The law of fondity means a man can get used to anything. Even if it is pain, they can get used to it if they can have it regularly. Man has been created and wired to be able to handle anything and get used to it. Now this one includes beauty. So she can shock you today. Just wait until you live with her for one year. You wake up and you're so used and it's no longer a miracle. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Man has been wired with a working mechanism in them to get used to almost everything. If the Bible says men can get used to the presence of God. Do you know what it means to be in the presence of God? God comes and melts you. And you want to disappear from your flesh. But the Bible says men can get used to the presence of God. But the Bible says, the Bible says the children of Israel got used to the presence of the Lord and they began to murmur. Like God would show up and they tell God, Moses, take away your God. God who would come as a consuming fire. Children of Israel would say, ah, we are tired of this God who comes in a cloud. Moses one day woke up and he was so used to God and God told him, hey, go speak to the rock and God car and Moses carried poor. Hit the rock that God told him to speak to. So you think that ah, I cannot get enough of you. That's dating. Oh my God, I can't get enough of you. I, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, when I, I can't live without you. Nonsense. That's dating. Those are things you speak on a date because you just saw lipstick. Those are things you speak over tea because they sound good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Those are things you speak over tea because you, they sound good when you speak them. So to some of you, those things are just tactics. Because I'm just trying to ask you if you can sustain the utterances you began with. If you can sustain the utterances you began with on the first date. But what, what if the, when the law of fondity comes in? Because you don't know what it means to sustain a marriage. It takes God to sustain a marriage, no matter how beautiful or handsome the person is. It takes God to sustain a person. I don't know if you know, it, it's, it's already hard for you to live with you. And we're talking about you seeing the same person every day, in the morning, in the evening, in the morning, in the evening, in the morning, in the evening. Their jokes become not funny again. <laughs> you loved hate. And now hate becomes like an electricity pole. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At a certain point, the thing that impressed you on the first day will become so normal. And you need something new. And it will take God for you to sustain what you began. Because it is God, he who began a good work. It's him who ends. But men do not end. And so if marriage is not God initiated, it will be ended. Did you get what I just said? And so I think you see the reasons that should be pointed at when a man is going to get married. And some of you are oh, fiery. You want to get married as quickly as now. Why? I'm getting old. Ah. She's getting old. She's getting old. What do you mean getting old? I'm 27. I'm 28. <laughs> and she wants to get married. You know why? I'm 27. I'm 28. I'm getting 30. How old was Eve when she got married? How old was Eve when she got married? She was not even one day old. See, the Bible says Adam was asleep and the guy, God came and plucked out a bone. Guy is still asleep. A woman, 
It took God. He came, plucked out the bone, created the, the woman when the man was still asleep and brought the man back and the guy was still asleep. And when the guy woke up, they got married. The woman was not even one day old yet. Time is not what matters in marriage. Mar Eve was married when he was a baby of one day. In this kingdom, marriage is, marriage is not determined by how old. How old was Esther when she got married? You study theological numerology. That girl, girl, according to the Bible, was 68. It's not time and age that matters in here. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not time that, and age that matters in this place. No, it's purpose that matters. The Bible does not say God said, let me make him a wife. The Bible says God said, let me make him a helper, meet. But it was about the purpose of the woman before God created the woman. He says, let me make him a helper. Let me make him a helper. God, this thing was not even in the mind of the guy. And God said, let me make him a helper. It, what was in the mind of God was helping. It was helping. It was after Adam has found out that he is supposed to do this on earth. This is when men become kings. Men become kings when they find the throne. And the throne here is purpose. The reason for their living. Purpose. The reason for their living. Did you just get what I said? It was, I think, Martin Luther King who said, if a man has not found something he can die for, he has not begun to live. He's existing. If you've not found something you can die for, you have not begun living. Because living begins. See, I don't know. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Another wise man that says that there are two most important days in life. The day you were born and the day you found out why. When a man finds out why they were born, they should celebrate that day more than they celebrate their birthday. Because that's more important than being born. When you find out why, it's more important than when you were born. But now, people are born. Before they find out why, they want to marry. Why? Because Africans marry. Because it's the next thing on their agenda. Do you get what I'm saying? It is because they have been trained like that. Wake up. Uh -huh. Get born. Uh -huh. Go to school. Uh -huh. Graduate. Uh -huh. Get a job. Uh -huh. Get married. So everybody that you see here that wants to get married, if you deep down get into their mind, what is the reason? I am done with every other thing. Oh, school failed. So what am I doing? Do you get what I'm saying? They marry because it's the next thing on their agenda. And they get there and they come back. Do you know why? Because they were not taught the God kind of design as it pertains to marriage. And so they go when they are immature and immaturity costs them so high and they come back wounded. Same to, to gentlemen. They go when they are not yet husbands. Because they think being a male makes you a husband. They think being a female makes you a wife. The Bible doesn't say he who finds a woman. It says he who finds a wife. There's some kind of transition that happens from womanhood to wifery. Just like there's some kind of transition that happens from manhood to husbandhood. It's, it's not automatic that a man who is a male is a husband. Men become husbands and some people die before their husbands, yet they have children. Just like some women die before their ever wives, yet they give birth. Because that's not what qualifies you to be a woman. That's not what qualifies you to be. Look, to be a woman, it's about gender. To be a wife, it's about understanding. It's maturity. The metamorphosis of a woman into a wife is about the maturational process of the understanding of the purposes and what they can carry in the world. And so do you know that we find ourselves in cases as pastors a woman is not allowed to come to church. Are you getting what I'm saying? The husband said, ah, I don't want you at church. And then the girl is, pray, is crying. Why are you crying? Papa, pray for me. Why? My husband didn't allow me to church. What? When did you get married? Why, why, why were you excited? Because right now, if you get married to anybody that you're dating, my advice on your wedding day will be submit to them. If they tell you don't put on trousers, don't put them on. If they tell you don't touch makeup, don't touch it. Because in this kingdom, praise the Lord, husbands are more important than men of God. In the kingdom of God. 
Did you get what I'm saying? Some people tell you that it is. Uh, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That it is God, your man of God, then your husband. That's not how the Bible teaches it. That's not how the Bible teaches it. Did you get what I'm saying? The Bible says, submit to your husband as the church submits to Christ. The church does not submit to any other person apart from Christ. That's how a wife is supposed to submit to the husband. So it means if your pastor said, listen to me, go, I want you here at 12. And when your pastor has given you that instruction, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, you go and tomorrow in the morning, your husband tells you, I want you at my place at 11. He'd be like, but my man of God told me I should be there. Hey, your man of God comes after your husband. The Bible says if you cannot take care of your house, how can you take care of the house of the Lord? Your house comes first. Your husband comes before your man of God. That's why you should be discerning to know, to choose who you submit to. Why? Because as long as you say, yes, I do, submission begins there. Because according to ranking in scripture, God does not give wives to husbands. God gives wives to fathers. That's why when you are in church, the man holding your hand the other side is your dad. You get what I'm saying? He's holding you to hand you over. He's retiring from you. He's handing you over to another father. That's why when this man hands you over to this man, you drop that man's name. And takes up this man's name. <laughs> you didn't just get a husband. You got yourself another dad. And this guy has more authority over you than your father. Your name was Barbara Mugume. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, your name becomes... What's the name? I'm waiting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those of you who have husbands with uh, glorious names. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You get what I'm saying? Your name shifts that very moment when you say, yes, I do. You know why? You've just changed parents. <laughs> You've just, are you hearing what I'm saying? You just got into the hands of a person that is going to control you for the rest of your life. Here, it is not love from women. According to scripture, women don't love. They submit. Why? Because scripture is speaking, men don't understand love as you call it love. Men understand love as submission. Just like in this context, women don't understand love as you call it love. Women understand love as affection. Did you get what I just said? Okay, let me explain to you. So for you wives who tell your husbands, I love you so much, it doesn't mean anything to them. They just don't tell you, but I love you to a man doesn't mean anything. Okay, if you know what I'm saying, if you want to know what I'm saying, go and buy roses. And go and surprise your husband. Ta-da! With flowers. Your husband will be like, how much did you buy these ones? A hundred thousand. Take it back and bring me the money. Because roses don't mean anything to them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because to them, love is respect. To husbands, to men, love is respect. To wives, love is not respect. Love is affection. Did you get what I just said? And so if a man is not taught these things, as scripture speaks it, they mess up in marriage. You know why? They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to relate. They think it's just about put a ring on my finger. And then after that, just put a ring on my finger. Let me just dance in that gown. And after that, we're going to see the rest of the things after that. And then after that becomes really after that. Because when you see them all over here, praise our Lord Jesus Christ, they are not preparing for marriage, they are preparing for weddings. When you talk about, I see a marriage, do you know what they say? Amen. What is in their head is, is, is the day. This day takes eight hours. You are in a gown for eight hours longest. We just show up and eat your food and judge you. You understand? Uh -uh, that gown should have been like this. They are eating your food and judging you. 
I said, ah, uh-uh, ah, the man is very tall. Ah, conquer this woman. Why didn't she get someone shorter? Anyway, let us eat this food. Quai, 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 quai. We eat your food, drink your soda. Then we also look again. Ah, so because she has ugly maids. Quai, quai, quai. We eat, hey, we eat it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after we are completely done, we'll be like, ah, this part was not even fun. And we go. People do those things on weddings. When you see them seated there, 5% of them are your well-wishers. The rest are judging your gown. The rest are eating the food they don't like. They say, ah, this food was nangi. Eh? They don't stop, but they eat saying, ah, this food was not good. But the sister, when we are saying, let us pray for marriages, when she was speaking so deep, she was thinking about an eight-hour day. She was thinking about the Range Rovers that will have a number plate of a paper. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ben on Webb's Mabel. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look here. That's what they were thinking about. And, and when you tell them marriage, they are thinking about they are thinking about the entourage. Tan, 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 tan. Then she hits her hands to, to the to the befriends. Ton ton ta ta. And then she sits down. Listen, when we are gone eight after the, those eight hours, you're gonna go with your beast in your house, and it eats you because you did not prepare. Because when we're talking about receive a marriage, let us pray for marriages, Father, in the name of Jesus. When God was thinking about marriage, you were thinking about wedding. You get what I'm saying? That's why you meet them. And two days after the wedding, they are already quarreling. You know why? Because when we're talking about marriage, they were thinking about wedding. And they got debts to do a wedding. Loans. What kind of stupidity is that? Why would you get a loan to do a wedding? Why? Because you want to please somebody. Or because you want to amuse people. They'd be like, do you know he came in Highlanders? He had seven... Range Rovers. Oh my God. No, no, if you want Range Rovers, I have. Come, I will give you for free. And I'm serious. I will even fuel them from home and I will give them here. I have enough ranges. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I'm saying those of you who want to wed, I have more than five cars. Yes, come and they're all VIP cars. So come, I will give you. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid that you're trying to... There are people... <laughs> now they propose to her. And she's saving. What, for what? You think to buy a bed? To buy a plot? Uh-uh. She's saving to buy a gown, which is okay. But she's saving three billion. Three million to buy a gown. And when you check her bank account, 20k. And she wants to buy... A, a, you get what I'm saying? And then she gets... Three million buys a gown. <laughs> After that, nobody can buy it at even one million. Because they know you don't have where any, anywhere to put it. What if you go and just hire a gown? Woman of God. Amarada. No, no, no. I want to buy a gown. Then it, uh, Patricia had a gown. Uh, she gown to Patricia. Such a gara. Njagala gown in Najidaba. Na, na jiraba ku TV. Ani ya jamba. Who had it? Kim Kardashian. What is the worth of Kim Kardashian, woman of God? What is her worth? What is her worth? Ah ah, nze nkugambi jenjagala. Okay. Already you're marrying a fool. La brozila hatebe kovrasila. Father, we thank you for our understanding. You can't beat me. Already you're marrying a fool. When we see, when we when we are, I'm, 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 there's no problem if you have the money. You get what I'm saying? If you have the money, do any kind of luxury you would love to do. But I'm, I'm just against a woman coming from honeymoon. You wanted to go to the Bahamas, or you wanted to go to Acapulco. You get what I'm saying? And you wanted to hire 
a first class in the Emirates. You get what I'm saying? And you're very sure that everything you have is alone. Look, there's a 10 years anniversary. You will do that if the money has come. There's a 25th year anniversary. You will enjoy. Why would you take a loan? There's no life. Listen, there's no marriage that is sweet. When you, you are all broke. It's not. I know they are telling you, ah, ah, as long as the love is, you will be at peace. It's nonsense. Love does not buy milk. You're not going to go to the diary and you'll be like, hi, I love my husband. you like, have two liters. That's not how it works. You must be wise. You must be wise. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be wise. So, you look at them and when we talk about marriage, what is in their heads is what? Wedding. Girls, lift your hands. May God give you understanding. They say amen. amen. Men, lift your hands. May God give you wisdom. Say amen. 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 May God give you wisdom. Have you seen guys who are getting married of, over competition? Huh? I one day almost slapped one of my daughters who came to me and she told me, I don't want to do a wedding like my sister did. Why? No, it was good, eh? but you know, latter glory. And I'm like, all right, that's okay. And I'm like, so how much do you have? Papa. Papa, you know my man of God. She's talking about the husband. Uh -huh. He's even believing God. Uh -huh. But me. Uh -huh. I'm trying, I'm waiting for her to get on the point. She finally said, we gathered 10 million. Uh -huh. But mm -mm. what do you want to do? I'm taking a caroni. I'm like, you know why they kept quiet? Because they are the same. They're also taking a caroni. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I don't want to find loans here. What does it help you to fly? Huh? In a helicopter on your wedding. When you're going to a muzigo. After the wedding. You fly and they actually ah, did a very expensive wedding. After that, to, 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 how much is the music? 300. <laughs> Man, what's wrong with you? So, it's an error in the African society that must be rectified. You don't get married because it's, because it's the next thing on the agenda. You don't get married because other people got married around you. Like some of you. Oh, my friends, all oh my girls got married. All my guy friends, they got married. I'm the only one left. <laughs> and then, praise the Lord. You're like, all right, you're going into marriage just because your friend got married? Or you're going into marriage because your, your dad is saying, hey, it's time you've been unmarried for long. Go and get married. And then somebody is also restless and pressurized because the dad is saying, everybody is getting married. Why are you not getting married? Are you ready? Yes. When you ask them, are you ready? Yes. What do they mean by ready? They feel I am old enough. In those days, they went to Bethlehem, right? Moses, uh, it was Joseph and Mary. They went to Bethlehem and the Bible says it was a census going on. In Matthew chapter 2. And when they got there, they could not find an inn to sleep in. And they went and got a kraal, right? Right? It was a kraal. A kraal is a house of what? A kraal is a house, of, a house of, of cows, right? You guys are not sure. English. A house is a... A kraal is a house of what? Cows, right? Cattle. Now, the manger is not a kraal. The manger is the place where cows eat salt from. What do they call it in Luganda? What do they call it in Luganda? Chiraro. 
No, kral is jiraru. What do they call that? What do they call it? <laughs> no, you tell me. What do they call that? What do they call it in Nyangole? Tinimba. What do they call it in Luganda? Where is Ben? Ben. Ben. Ben are you? Ben, but it's about here. Balunda. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, that's not the major issue. It was Jesus was manifested in a house of cows, right? Are you following me? And then the Bible says that after all these things had happened, Jesus has manifested. There were the three kings, three wise men. If you read some extra canonical books, some extra biblical texts, you should be even able to understand what their names are. I've read those things. And their names and where they came from and what they ruled over. One from, was from India, another one was from Persia, another one from Arabia. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And these men gather together with gold, with silver, with incense, with mar, and they gather and they travel together from all that far. And they meet in Bethlehem. And they go into a home. And they pass the main house. And they take gold, silver, which has never come into that house. But they go past the house and they go to the kraal to take gold. Are you getting what I'm saying? Kings traveled from that far. And they entered a city they had not got into. That city did not have a king. That home had never seen kings. But now they were three rich kings. And they entered a, a city that had never seen kings. Entered a home that had never seen kings. And they did not even go to the main house. They went to the house of cows. And even in the house of cows, they knelt down and worshipped. Did you get what I just said? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I'm trying to show you how to position yourself to attract kings. How kings come to men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says kings shall come to your rising. And this principle works in marriage. It works in ministry. It works in business. It is a principle that attracts men of honor to you. Because men of honor are the men that elevate men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A queen does not become a queen unless there's a king that found the queen. You don't become a queen unless a king found you. A kingless queen is not a queen, it's a woman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. And so there's a law that is biblical that attracts kings. This is it. How many of you remember that a house in this scripture represents a body of a man? Okay, let me explain to you. First Corinthians chapter nine, chapter six, verse nineteen. He says, don't you know that bodies, right? Bodies are temples of the Holy Ghost, right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Bodies are temples of the Holy Ghost. It's the house of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the house of the Holy Ghost, where God lives. So when we talk about a house, we're talking about a body. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you guys follow? And now, this body was a body of cows. How, how, how many of you know what, the, that, what cows represent in scripture? In Genesis, the Bible says, and the seven cows huh, are the seven years. You remember? The seven cows are the seven years. This is the interpretation of Joseph trying to tell Pharaoh. He says in the spirit, cows represent years. He says the seven cows are the seven years. You remember? Now, listen, this was a body in Bethlehem. This was a body. What, how many of you know what Bethlehem represents? Bethlehem, the Bible says, meant the house of bread. The house of bread. The house of the word. That that body was in, a, in, in I mean, it's the very word of God. If you don't follow me right now, I'll, 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 I will lose you. That it was the body full of years, just. It was a body full of what? Uh, I need you to get it. 
It was a body full of years, full stop. It was a kraal. It was a body of cattle. It was a body full of years. It was a woman who wants to get married simply because she has 30. And there was no king coming to that place simply because it has the years. Until the Savior was manifested in this place. And when the Savior was manifested in this place, a star shot up and it, it attracted kings wherever they were. Yet this one, are you hearing what I'm saying? It, when a Savior was manifested in this place, a star went to the heaven and it spoke to kings on her behalf. And kings began to seek after the star until the star brought them to a body which has years. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, and when the kings, kings do not look for people. They look for stars. Kings don't run after women. They run after stars. And if a star has not been shot in the skies, you're going to attract a nabai, not a king. If a star has not been shot in the skies, you're going to attract another kind of thing, not a king. For if a person will attract a king, a star must be shot. Because kings attract the languaging of stars. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If, she fo if he found you, look, there must be a king that has been manifested. There must be a king that has been manifested in the woman of God. There must be a king kind of royalty that has been demonstrated. And if this demonstration has not been happening, if it has not happened, there is nothing like a king tracing you because you're not visible. I'm trying to say that there are people that are visible to kings and there are people that are not visible to kings. Just like there are people that are visible to queens and there are people who are not visible to queens that when a king is passing by, his eyes can't see you because you don't shine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how old you have grown. It's not about age. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. It's not about age. It's not about age. It's about the star that has been shot. If the star has not been shot, a king will not find you. Because the eyes of kings see stars. How many houses were in that place? Many. How good were they? Very good. Why would a king bypass duplexes, complexes, condominiums, very good houses to go to a kraal? Because that's what the king is. The savior has been manifested in a kraal. If a savior is manifested in a piggery, they will go there. If the savior has been manifested in a, in, a, in a bad cage, they will go there. This one has nothing to do with the beauty. A kraal is not beautiful. But kings will go into a kraal if the savior is there. It's not that the Savior is there. The Savior has been manifested. A king will go to a kraal if, if that's where the Savior has been manifested. Did you just get what I just said? He will go to a taxi if that's where the Savior has been manifested. He will go to a bird cage if that's where the Savior has been manifested. He will go to a poultry house is that, if that is where the Savior has manifested. It is not about how cute the house looks like. No, 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 no. It's about who is manifested in that house. And if he's not manifested, the king doesn't come. You can only attract men who do not have understanding of the spiritual realities. Did you get what I just said? You can, uh, there are certain people attract certain people. Certain men attract certain women. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there's a law that you must understand that we all attract our kind. Look at the guys you're falling in love with. Whether you love them or you don't love them, there's something similar, major, about you and them. And somebody's going to say like, ah, but me, the guys that date me, they have a yaya. That's the truth. There's, we all attract our kind at a certain level. You might not see, but it is that. You might not see, but it is that. We all attract our kind at a particular place. And if you have not worked in your spirit to manifest a particular kind of glory, woman of God, you will attract a man without any kind of glory. Because I should ask a question. If you knew you the way you know you and you were not you, would you marry you? You know you the way you know you, right? 
Now, if you knew you the way you know you, and you were not you, would you marry you? Would you go with you to a date? Would you choose you for a wife? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Or the only thing you like about you is your hair. It's not your hair, you got it from saloon. Praise the Lord. Banange, I love my fingers. They don't make marriage. They don't make marriage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Me katonda yampe liso. Be with your liso. That's not what makes queens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says in Esther chapter 2 that the king, that, that Esther found favor before the king among all the virgins. They were all virgins. But there was something about Esther. You get what I'm saying? What was special about Esther? The Bible says before she went to the palace, she said to herself, I am going to save my kindred. That was purpose. She said, I'm going to save my kindred. And she said, if I die, I die. Again, I said, if you have not found a reason to die for, you're not ready to live. She said, I'm going to save my kinsmen. I'm going to save my kindred. Let me go to the king right now. If I die, I will die. And she entered. And as she entered, the Bible says, the king saw a woman and could not resist the woman. Why? She understood the mystery of stardom. That's how women shine. But do you know what? Some of us, the only thing we have is a cute nose. Yes, you're going to attract another man with a cute nose. But with nothing. In their spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All we have is a cute face. And then you keep you looking at yourself in the mirror. But honestly, honestly, am I agree? You are agree. <laughs> Again, the Bible says beauty, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. Do you get what I'm saying? There is something beyond the beauty on a woman. There's something that, be, oh my God. There's something beyond the beauty on that woman. And I'm talking about the kings of this kingdom. I'm not talking about the kings of the world. The kings of the world will, will, will gather out women to themselves. The king of this kind of kingdom. Do you get what I'm saying? They are looking at pleasure as God pleasures is. Here. There's no way you cannot love your wife. In this kingdom. There's no way you cannot love the, your wife. You know why? You can only... Be, you can only walk without loving your wife if you don't understand the, the word. But if you understand the word, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, you will love them. Why? Because he who loveth not the brethren and understandeth not God for God is love. You know how to love. Your nature is love. If you get me, say an amen. Look, kings, kings, there are two kinds of men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? One is the kings, the wise men. The mad guy. Number two, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Galilean men. Someone say Galilean men. You remember Galilean men? Do you remember? They went to seek Jesus in a grave. You remember? And the Bible says, the Bible says, angels ask them, you Galilean men, why do you seek the living among the dead? They went seeking the king, an alive king in a grave. Yet, Yet, he had gone. Those are the kinds of men some of you are attracting. Do you know why? They keep looking. Is this the one? No, it's not the one. Is that the one? No, is that the one? Is that the one? No, she's not the one. Is this the one? Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? By the time they get married, they tested 700. Galilean. Galilean. Because when they are are you hearing what I'm saying? When they are trying, when they are testing, they don't know who, what they are looking for. They want to see and know. They don't know that we know and see. Uh, I just hit a six inch nail into some guy's heart. <laughs> because he has been looking and testing for the last five years. Galilean. It's a demon. It's a demon. You do not see and then know. You know and then seek. We first get sure and then we begin seeking. We did not. <clears throat> you get
get what I'm saying? You cannot say, I met her, and then I, oh, but she's the one. I kept on, then I realized that she was not the one. Galilean. Kings sit, they went after a star, and it was sure deal that Jesus is here. These ones went running. She got there, and they found angels. Angels are like, angels were shocked. How can you be seeking a man who is living among the dead? You Galilean men. And the angel even called them Galilean. There's a problem with Galilee. There's a problem with Galilee. They seek the living among the dead. They seek queens among fools. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. She can't pray for herself. How is she going to sustain her children? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But, listen, there are some fools that are investing in folly, but they want God to bring them kings. You get what I'm saying? They're telling God, Father, if you see in their head the kind of man they want, they are that man with them. You, you will really know that for God to give them such a man, God will be corrupt. Which is not going to happen. If God has laid foundations and he says, look, you can only attract what you are like. In physics, like poles are repel, right? But in the spirit, like poles attract. Unlike poles attract in physics. In the spirit, unlike poles repel. If you are unlike, you will not attract. If the king comes your way, God will turn their feet. If you're not queen-like. This thing is not about makeup. I, I, I'm not saying don't do makeup. Praise the Lord, sisters. I'm just saying that's not elementary and precedental. It's not a major issue. It's not on the outward. It's not the outward that matters. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers, I did not say, don't, I, I did not say marry a person who, who's, who your eyes don't, don't like. That's not what I say. Because I know men of God have told you, ah, it's not about beauty. Uh, the beauty doesn't matter. No, it matters. Beautiful hearts don't look good on pictures. You get what I'm saying? If you take a picture, people who hold the pictures will be like, Wambe, she has a beautiful heart. No. Hearts don't be seen on pictures. You get what I'm saying? But I'm just saying that when you are considering things, beauty comes like number six. If it comes number one, dude, <laughs> Galilean man, the Lord be thy shepherd, thou shalt not want. He makest thou to lie by still waters and green pastures. The Lord give you understanding. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. See, Abigail got married to Nabal. Look, like, 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 there's, there's, them, there's some guy saying, ah, 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 according to you, I've described a fool. I am really a fool. But I have a queen. The queen will go. Nabal had Abigail as long as David was absent. When David showed up, Abigail went. You should understand. Do you get what I'm saying? The Bible says Rachel was loved and Leah was hate, hated. It didn't matter how many children God gave Leah. Leah was hated. A queen shall always be a queen. If you get me, say an amen. See, as long as this house manifests the Lord, kings will come. And as long as this body shows Christ forth, kings will find him. But some of you, you're very serious with yourself. Because you have left the things that, are, that matter and you're on things that don't matter. When you tell her, work on your tongue. Uh, uh, uh. Even me at home, they know me. If I get angry, I get angry. If I get angry, I get angry. Uh, I will abuse you blue-black. Oh, you abuse blue-black, we shall see. 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. She's fighting over everything. She doesn't settle. She, you tell her, leave gossip alone. She said, me, that is how I am. I was created like that. Mama come with bang some KB. Okay. You're going to attract a gossiper. You're going to attract a gossiping man. And the, the funny thing is that on their first time, you don't see it. They look good in suits on wedding. He said, dude, he has a hunk. Okay. Get in the house and see the hunk. And he becomes a handkerchief. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you see them on the first place, you're not going to find out. And people don't understand that some things are just for dates. The person you met at Cafe Javas took two hours dressing up, looking herself in the mirror. Mm, mm, mm. She came when she was perfect. She put on seven dresses and put them off. And got the perfect of all. And came. And when you saw her, you thought you have seen the real her. The real her is at home. She touched two shops. I am. I don't have appetites. Why? That is my nature. <laughs> you just marry her. Until it, she will show you that she can eat ten Rolexes. And, Listen. <laughs> hey. Praise the Lord Jesus. You may, and then somebody is fooled by the appearance she saw at Cafe Javas. Hallelujah. She said, oh my God. Listen, even that, listen, one week in marriage, the accent will break. Even the accent will drop. She'll bring out her local language. Oh, boy. And you'll be like, wait a minute. Hey. One gambat? Overdo gambot. Praise the Lord. She'll bring out her very own. Have you seen women who say, I will show you my true colors? It means what you saw on Javas was the false color. I will show you my true colors. And then some guy just meets a guy in a suit. Guy opens your door. And then, oh my God, he's a gentleman. <laughs> eh? Go home and see. You say, open my door. I said, oh my, you are welcome. But you were opening. Yeah, that was Cafe Javas. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saying that what you meet on the dead is not the real person. So how should I know the real person? Who is supposed to do that? Who is supposed to let you know the real person? The true person? Who is supposed to let you know? Who? Who? Ah. And you guys are all candidates of marriage. Dorothy is saying, me, me, me. <laughs> Listen, what is the office of the Holy Spirit? What is the office of the Holy Ghost? What is the office? What is his responsibility in your life? Those of you who keep shouting, you have the Holy Spirit. And when you talk about marriage, you say, ah, leave the things of the Spirit alone. Let us get real. You will knock. What's the role of the Holy Ghost? You meet somebody. And then excitement, the cravings of the flesh, they all take you home. It jumps up, up and down. And it all slips doing like this. Oh my God, he's handsome. Until morning. The next day, you go and, oh my God, he's handsome. One month, they take it. They wed it. They beat it. Because it refused to understand. When he was supposed to ask the Holy Ghost, he said, ah, Holy Spirit, be then it jumps up and down. Then it practices the dresses she's going to put on tomorrow. Oh my God, oh my God. Tomorrow. Goes again. And then it acts shy when it is not shy. And it... 
And then later on, proposal. Try. Oh my God! Yes, 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 yes. Some of you are not even surprised. You're acting surprised. Some of you know they are going to they are going to propose. And then you faint. <sighs> then they bring you back. Sorry, sorry. Inside of your heart, you know, I am lying. Then they put the name, the, 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 they put the, what is that thing? The ring. <laughs> and then tomorrow she goes, huh? she never used to greet people, now she greets, hi! When she wants to, to explain something, ladies and gentlemen, you know, and then one day comes and she wants to throw the ring. Because the first foundational principle, she ran. She didn't ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do? But I met him in church. Hey, demons attend church too. But he speaks in tongues. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What's wrong with you? Have you not met demons that speak in tongues? Don't be, don't be stupid. And those of you who are not cultivating your relationship with the Holy Ghost, you're going to mess up your lives. Because when you speak the major things, you take the minor. Because you think the major issue is getting married. <laughs> what is marriage to you? What is marriage to you? It's the funniest institution. Guys are there, they want to come out. But the guys who are out, they want to go in. The people that are inside want to run out. The people that are outside want to run in. You ask yourself, what is this? The other institutions, they give you a certificate after you have achieved or attained the degree. Here, they give you a certificate before you begin. It means you don't come out. And people don't get it. They don't get it. They don't know some things are traps. And you can enjoy it only if you prepare but it will become hell on earth if you did not. And some of you don't understand that some people, it will take the grace, supernatural grace for you to be delivered from them. You meet some people that are divorced, they will tell you, Namuona. Yet the person they are saying Namuona <laughs> was baby, was bay, was boo, like a bomb. But at a certain point, they come, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. God help me. I want to get out of this thing. This is hell. Oh my God, Papa, my marriage is hell on earth. How did you enter hell? Who gave you the, the keys to hell? Excitement is a key to hell. Excitement. Guys get excited and they get themselves into hell. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, because you are under pressure, cool your pressure down. Because your parents said, guys, Get principles from scripture. Stop asking God for people that you're not like. Some of you are so poor. And you're asking God for rich men. Ah, when I say poor, they think I'm talking about the pocket. No, I'm talking about the heart. Because there are some people, there are some women you will marry and you will get poor the next day. You meet them. You meet her standing with the border guy. I want my 500. I want my coin. Give it to me. My coin. And you're like, man, this wants to marry a billionaire. Hey. Chido Chang. Chido Chang. She cannot lose 500 shillings. But she wants to marry a rich man. With this kind of poverty. But me, I have nothing in the pocket. If you leave 500, will you die? She can stand somewhere and freeze in coldness waiting for balance of 5k. She would rather lose her respect than lose her balance. And she wants, she's asking God for a rich man. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You find her in a restaurant, she abuses this one, abuses that one, abuses this one, abuses... You're not serious. She abuses everybody as long as that person is lower class. That woman. And she wants God, she wants God to give her a rich man. What will you do to the get man? Or the nephews of the husband if they come home in the holiday? 
Some of you cannot handle greatness. You can't handle greatness and you cannot be wives to greatness. But you are here because you are daughters of Dennis Judah. Oh my God, oh my God. Papa has taught us how to confess. I am a woman. Oh, I'm a wife of greatness. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. And after you are done, angels look at each other and they laugh. They'll be like this kind of poverty mentality that you're carrying. You. You want to mother greatness and be a wife to greatness. You. You who is full of insecurity. When you see a beautiful girl coming, do you want to run and, and stand in, in front of your husband? like You who is insecure. Like that, you have not trained yourself to be rid of insecurity. And you want to be a wife of greatness. You. Like gentlemen. Some of them are poor and they want to marry rich women. You know the brother he says, if you don't have my 1K balance, drive me around and bring me back. Yes, guys are like that. You don't know. And the person says, Mugaga, see now look me. Guy is in a suit and he's saying Runonye. Akasa kokambuze kanonye. Njaku imirirao. And the guy gets bitten by mosquitoes. Mosquito is the guy is waiting for one key. And then the guy comes back. One. Kambuze. Eh, katoja kumfu gamuntu se walion sisi. What is that? What is that? He's seated in church. When she's going to give offering, he picks out the smallest and he's asking God for a rich woman. What is wrong with you? God will not get his beloved and trust him with a crook. God will not do that. Honestly, God will not do that. There are, has, there are gentlemen that are so, oh my God, they are rigid. You just see a good suit. But if you entered, he will count the meat for you to cook. There was one kilogram. Where is the rest? Where's the liver we bought? Some guys are like that. And some of you don't know what women go through. You don't know. You just see them smiling in church and raising hands. Some of you don't know what women go through. And some of you, if the Holy Spirit peeped you into the future of the guy you call Bay, you would say, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm serious. Some of you, will, if you, it says that you don't ask God. But if you told God, God, tell me, show me 10 years. Just tell Jesus that. Show me 10 years of this gentleman with me. <laughs> you see yourself looking like a reed. He will get you off Facebook, get you off WhatsApp, get you off Twitter, get you off any social media because he's afraid another man should not see you. What's wrong with you? Why are you insecure if you are enough? Why would you go to that place? Why would you go to such an extent? You get what I'm saying? I've seen some men stopping their wives from coming to Apocalypse. Why? The pastor is a young man. What's wrong with people? Yes, they have happened like five times and I see. The pastor is a young man. What is wrong with, what is wrong with such people? They just, I just tell the women, tell that guy to first listen to my sermon. One sermon. He will realize this guy is an apostle. You tell them just just forward them to YouTube. They will know that some guys are above certain things. They are your parents. They are actually your grandparents. Yes. Yes. But he just saw a, sign, a, a face without beards in a picture. And he says, huh? What nonsense is that? What nonsense is that? I am their grandfather. Do you know why somebody would come to that place? Because he cannot take care of another man's daughter. When he sees another man's daughter, he sees a wife or someone to sleep with. When I see another man's daughter, I see a child. I am their father. You ask them. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? You ask any of them here if I've got funny with any one of them. Ask any one of them if I've got funny with any. Let her lift her hand. The Bible says Samuel stood and said, that I am in my old age and let one man from Israel lift, her hand, lift their hand if I have taken an iwi lamb from them and there was none. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you know why? 
Because when they got in there, they were not ready. They might be 40 years. They were not ready. They might be 50 years. They were not ready. Because you do not know that when God gives you a wife, he didn't give you a competitor. He gave you a daughter. That's why automatically they are called baby. It's scriptural for you to call your wife baby. Ah, go on. Read the Bible. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Look for it in scripture if the Bible says the woman shall leave his father and mother. It's not there. It's the man who leaves his father and mother to become father. He's a full grown father to become father to a wife. God does not give you a woman for you to be a husband. He gives her to you for you to be a dad. That's why you cannot beat them. Because when you read this scripture, you'll understand that the muscles given to you are for protection, not for violation. That's why you should get married to men in apocalypse. Because honestly, how can a man hear these words eh? and you don't marry them? <laughs> Glory to God! How? Oh, listen, just imagine a gentleman. My sons are blessed. Clouds of every year had all of this. <laughs> How can men hear such stuff every month and you are looking for a man from another place? God rebuke you. I'm, I, I'm imagining the weddings we're going to have in this place. Do it. Lega de Vahila. Do you get what I'm saying? I'll be looking at her and him. And in my suit, just saying, we think, think Papa. And I'm like, uh -huh, you got yourself a cool husband. That's what I'm talking about. That's a real man. That's a real man, man. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You got yourself a cool man. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There are men that I know that if she marries, there is no way they cannot drive Benzes. If whether they have them now or they do not have them, they will get them. They are girls. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You look at their life right now and you know, blessed is the man which will pick you as wife. But you who cannot even bear him, if you, you're not patient over anything. Over anything. When you get hungry, hunger. Hunger. <laughs> Uh -huh. You order food online. And before the man, the tutu, you walk in your house like, when, oh my God. Me, I'm dying. What is wrong? I'm hungry. What? Dude, settle down. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. She becomes a beast. Because she's hungry. She becomes a beast. Person who cannot bear hunger. Even my mother knows me. Me, me when I'm hungry, I can eat you. Huh? Huh? Like, 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 even you're seated there on your it's your wedding day and you want to eat the plate. Woman of God, settle down. Feed at home. Work on particular things, women of God. Work on particular things. If some of you were peeped into your houses right now, you lost swept in June. Every cloth, qua, qua, laundry, 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 laundry. You remember to wash when you don't have what to put on. I am your father. Let me give you. Go home before tomorrow, wash all your clothes. But I have a woman who washes for me. Huh? Me, my wife, will have laundry attendants, but when I know she knows how to wash. Like for example, I will not eat food by, cooked by a maid. Aha, uh -huh, you hear how my sons are clapping? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> hey, hey. Mufumbe. What's wrong with you? What did you grow up doing? What did you grow up doing? Praise the Lord. 
Listen, woman of God, you're the one supposed to teach your maid manners. But your maid kneels, you don't kneel. Why? You're from Angola. <laughs> your maid kneels for you, you don't kneel. Uh -uh, the chiga in me doesn't kneel. Eh? Okay. I said men don't, and men don't spell love L-O-V-E. They spell love R-E-S-P-E-C-T. If honor is not in the house, love is not. If honor is not in the house, love is not. It doesn't matter where you are from or what clan or what sect you come from. If honor is not in the house, love is not. This is me, I disrespect him, but I love him. Where, where are you from? Uh, uh, me, I don't want those things. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, like some of you cannot, you cannot lose a quarrel. You would rather lose a marriage than lose a battle. You say, this is soap. Uh, uh, this is a plate. Man, why don't you just walk out of that argument? Me. Me. I, me. You'd rather lose a marriage than lose an argument. I said I didn't do it. You did it. I didn't. You did it. I didn't. Beat me. Woman of God, just settle down. If you lose an argument, you won't die. Some of you, you lose an argument, you don't sleep. You even wake up in the middle of the night at three, you wake up and like... Tomorrow you drive like... What is wrong? I lost an argument last night. What is wrong? <laughs> Some of you are like that. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Like, have you been to places of born again women? Wives, they are born again. Eh? Everything is like, like they speak in tongues in everything. Even in bed. Eh? Praise the Lord. There's a sister who came to me and the husband was saying, everything at home is pasta. That nonsense. Can you imagine you're in a man's house? That's his house. And everything you're talking about is Dennis Judah. Papa did this. Papa did that. Dude, that's a territory of another king. It's him you're supposed to talk about. Me, I don't teach you, I don't teach you to talk about me. I teach you to talk about Jesus. If you have a husband and I'm your profile pic, go put your husband. Now, if you have a husband and I'm your profile pic, go actually change now. Put your husband now. No, how can, how, how? You post the light scroll. But I ha you have a husband. Your husband sees a, a confess on you. Mm. My innocent self is in Barra preaching. And your husband is developing in things. It, but what, what has this man done to my wife? Let my daughters post me who are single. It's okay. But when you, you marry, eh, eh, post the gospel, yes, on your statuses. But, guys, don't bring me stuff. You cannot be talking about Papa in the house. Papa did this. Panange, Papa has anointing. Panange, the man will think, what is wrong with you? Be careful when you're in your house. Talk about him. And you guys, stop talking about Manchester like there's a problem. You Manchester has become... No, if men talk about me, that's okay. You get what I'm saying? But even when I'm raising men, I'm raising them to be their wives' pastors. Let me pastor the man. When you come here, you learn from me. The wife learns from you. You get what I'm saying? Yes, so... How can you be a man and you're learning prayer from your wife? How? You're learning prayer from your wife. Your wife is teaching you God. Hmm. You, <laughs> how? <laughs> how? Someone say how. How, how, can, how can you? Like, like you come in with, your, with a suit and then somebody says, Ah, I am tired of you, Kure. Man of God, it's you supposed to tell her, Hey, let's pause, pause, pause. 
if she's watching Z World. Praise the Lord. Pull out to the back, to the bedroom. Tell him, hey, close the bedroom. Hello, Brazil. And when you're done praying, lay hands on her. Say, in the name of Jesus, I come. Let her feel like she has a man of God in the house. But for you, your wife feels like he has a manager of Equity Bank. He feels like he has a umeme manager in the house. Like when you come, you're talking about power, wires. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Imagine Engineer Sam going home to his wife and he says, Now, uh, what's wrong? Why are you thinking? Cables. <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> eh? Imagine Dr. Benon going home and his, his wife is, has been waiting the whole day. And then she sits in the chair and he says, Do you know ciprofloxacin and tetracycline? Can... <laughs> How? What, do you, what are you doing? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey! Hey! By the way, I don't know what's wrong with this church. <laughs> I don't know who told you to receive the word passively like this. Praise the Lord. I don't know. Listen, nobody receives the word quiet. No, that's not the word. That's religion. You don't receive the word passively like this. Like some of you feel like standing up and you'll be like, eh? This person and this person. You don't receive the like like when I'm in Apocalypse Kampala, I don't see people sowing here. Yet when I'm speaking, things are cutting them through you. You understand? But they are saying, I receive it quietly. Eh? <laughs> That's not how they receive the word. People lamb, it's called lambanoing. You lambano, you take it by force. But people fear to shout. You know why? Because they have a beautiful neighbor. <laughs> You have a beautiful neighbor and you're afraid of shouting. Somebody say fire. fire. <laughs> See, there's a sister who wants to jump up like this. He says there's a brother and he's like, what if he's my man of God? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> if that brother didn't like you for the craze of the word, run away. No, you should marry someone whom you will get crazy and go together. Do you get what I'm saying? If you're not going to marry a person who will get you crazier in God, <laughs> don't marry a man who will stand up for the word and be like, hey, Mbora. <laughs> Mbora. Mbora <laughs> What's wrong with you? Hallelujah. No marry a person, you will sit in church. And when a deep revelation hits in you, you just get up together and you pull him up, you give him a high five, you sit down. But now you're seated to you're like the class monitor of the church. It's as if you came to write those who shout. Hey. <laughs> Somebody say, I receive it. Hey, some of you, I'm going to teach you how to be crazy. That's how we receive the word. But some of you are like, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go out, you're like, that guy preaches. Eh? And you want to jump up, but you are just jumping up from the heart. And then somebody's like, why don't you jump up? Ah, may I be jumping from the heart? <laughs> Listen. And then you see them, praise the Lord. Amen. Even when they begin to worship, they're like, Spirit, lift your hands, they be like, God, they need, like, <laughs> like there's a problem. You don't receive the word like that. Some of you post funny things and you're like, this must be the mind pattern of this boy. You know why? Because they are not such as of the word, the intent truths, the eternal truths of God. They are not men that seek to understand the principles of this kingdom. Money has principles in this kingdom. Marriage has principles in this kingdom. Anything has a principle. And it's in the word buried therein. And if a man does not take the correctness to put these principles, to draw them out of the word, you will mess up. You will mess up. What does God want? How does God want you to speak to, a, to your husband? How does God want you to address your wife? Did you get what I just said? For example, according to scripture, wives don't hear words. Women, naturally, they don't hear words. Did you get that? It's men that hear words. Women don't. Women experience what? Why? Because naturally men are actors and women are reactors. 
naturally, men are logical, women are emotional. Naturally, men are thinkers, women are feelers. So when you tell her you are a dog, she becomes a dog right away in her mind. Because she experiences what you speak. She doesn't hear it to process it. She experiences it. She feels what you speak. That's why it is wrong for you to let another man to speak to your wife more than you speak to her. But it's okay. In our culture, when we were growing up, it was wisdom to beat up women. But if you don't beat up your wife, she will undermine you. And then some of you have grown up in such nonsense. And you're preparing your arm to hit her. If you have sat under this doctrine, God deliver you. Even when there's a reason to beat, walk out. Even when there is a reason to speak a certain word, shut up. At least instead of just releasing a, a rotten word, release a scripture. And go feeling defeated, but it's better. You would rather say the Lord is that and wherever that spirit there is liberty. <laughs> instead of you saying you are a big fat dog. You'd rather just speak some scripture and just move out. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You must have understood how to address a woman before you start therein. There are men that are in our foot, that in whose footsteps we are. The screen. There are men in whose footsteps we are. Kenneth Hagin died and he said he had never had a quarrel with his wife. Miles Monroe died and he said he had never had a fight with his wife. And we think when men of God are teaching you here, they say, it's not possible. You will fight. And right now, most of you are thinking like this. It's possible. Do you people fight with your kids? Or you discipline, with your, ki you discipline your kids with love? Isn't that the truth? So if your wife is your daughter, how do you fight with your kid? Why is it hard for you to call them and discipline them in love? as your baby. This message was brought to you by Apocalypse Ministries International. You can follow us on our social media platforms on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Apocalypse TLEG. Apocalypse TLEG.